Hello everybody, this is Aquataser, and today, for some reason, I decided to forward a video about Al Haitho, as he's one of my favorite characters in the game, he's very fun to play, and I think more people should uh, become aware of kind of what uh, niche and just his, when niche he fills and kind of just his overall power level. Um, just for the record, I do not have any constellations, I do not have a signature weapon, and as such, this is probably going to be one of my more relatable character guides, um, out of the ones that I've done, as my Hu Tao and Ayaka are a lot more, uh, invested in than my Al Haitham. Uh, and even without that, he still performs extremely well. Uh, as you can see on the right, this is one of the teams I have that I play him in, but we will get to that later. First off, let's just kind of cover his kit. Uh, he is one of those characters that you should level to 90, as I believe he ascends with Dendro damage, and his level is going to affect a lot of his gameplay later on. His talents, his normal attack is a standard physical uh, string, and he actually does have a charge attack that typically does do uh, standard uh, physical damage. However, it does play into his kit a little bit, as we'll get into in just a second here. His skill is a ka like teleport forward. You can either hold it to aim it in a certain direction, or you can tap it. Typically, tapping it is ideal because it will teleport you to the nearest enemy. When you deal damage with his skill, you will generate two or one light mirrors, depending on how many mirrors you have at the moment. And it does damage based off his attack as well as his elemental mastery. His elemental mastery scaling is actually quite high, on the projection attacks down here, which we'll get to once we get to these later parts of his kit. Uh, but for the initial attack, uh, his rush attack damage is higher. And as you can see, it has an 18 second cooldown and a four second uh, mirror removal interval. And this will play into uh, his kit later. And kind of along in this same vein, uh, you can have three light mirrors at once. And once you generate uh, these light mirrors, then he will have a normal charge and plunging attack dendro infusion. And this cannot be overridden, which is kind of important, but not honestly not too important for the kinds of team comps you typically want to run him in. And the projection attack we'll get to in just a second. His burst is typically going to be just a source of damage. However, the important thing about his burst that is kind of, uh, it's, it's integral to his kit, is that it will generate mirrors depending on the amount of mirrors you have when you cast his burst. So it will do this little bit of damage here, this single instance. His basic attack with zero mirrors is going to do four hits. With one mirror, it's going to be six. Two mirrors, it's going to be eight. And three mirrors, it's going to be ten. And this is the amount of mirrors you have when you cast the burst. Um, most of the time when you play him, and you know there's going to be some specific rotations that you could cast it when you have mirrors, most of the time when you play him, you're going to be using his burst to generate mirrors. Because uh, his overall gameplay is essentially trying to keep as many mirrors on him as possible, because it will allow him to do the most damage. Uh, and the other important thing about his burst that's kind of necessary, but honestly doesn't play too much into his overall gameplay, but it is important, is that you will gain the mirrors two seconds after he uses burst, which means that there is a chance that you could swap off field and then swap back onto him in order to uh, catch the mirrors, so to say. You're not going to be catching mirrors, but the mirrors will generate two seconds after you cast it. So if you wanted to switch into a character that has a Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayers, switch into him, uh, he would have that attack buff, and he would also get the mirrors if you have low enough ping. If you have low enough ping. Um, and... I guess the other part of this to explain is that depending on the amount of mirrors you have when you cast the burst, so say you uh, cast the burst with one mirror, you will then gain two mirrors. And it kind of just goes in that same vein. So you're going to generate three if you have zero when you cast it, two if you have uh, one mirror when you cast it, one if you have two mirrors, and zero if you have three mirrors. So it's kind of just an inverse relationship right there. Most of the time you do want to cast it with zero mirrors as well. His ascension to passive is passive is when his charge or plunging attacks hit opponents, he will generate one light chisel or chisel light mirror. Uh, this effect can be triggered once every 12 seconds. This is very integral to his rotations. Uh, as his skill does have an 18 second cooldown uh, without constellations, the fact that you can generate a mirror from his charge attack most of the time, plunging attack isn't gonna be super uh, useful, so charge attack most of the time is very integral to his maximum damage. 
And then his passive talent is Ascension 4. Uh, each point of his EM will increase the damage dealt by projection attacks and, and his burst by 0.1%. Damage of both aforementioned abilities can be increased to a maximum of 100% this way. Basically, uh, if you have 1,000 EM, you're going to do 100% more damage per hit, uh, which is relevant. But most of the time, if you're going to play him as a DPS, you're going to be building him on crit, dendro, and EM. So having EM, this is just a little bit of an extra damage buff. Most of the time, you don't want to stack him with 1,000 EM because there are other characters that you could do that better. Uh, so more on the mirrors here. His optimal rotations are going to end up being, most of the time, cast your burst. And then as the mirrors go away, which I believe it says here, uh, where is it? Oh, four seconds. Every four seconds, you're going to lose a light mirror. Um, so every four seconds, you're going to want to ref refresh one more mirror so you can get this maximum damage bonus. Three hits at three mirrors of his uh, very high scaling here. So you want to be generating mirrors uh, and stay at three stacks for as long as possible. So his optimal rotations are going to be cast your burst so that you'll generate three mirrors. And then after four seconds, you will lose one mirror. You will then typically use his skill because it has the longer cooldown between this and his A4, his A2, excuse me. Uh, you will use a skill, generate one more mirror. Uh, once you generate that mirror, then you will have those, this, this running timer for the four seconds will be for the second mirror that did not disappear, but you will have three mirrors then for a little bit longer. Once you lose one more mirror, you will do a charge attack using his A2, and that will allow you to keep the highest uptime on his uh, three mirrors. And once you get down to two and one mirrors, you're going to be doing less damage. It's still not insignificant. You can stay on field with him for a little bit longer to generate more energy, as he will generate particles throughout all of his attacks. But it is not uh, essential, depending on how much energy recharge you have and what team comps you're running. And I'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, for leveling his talents, his normal attacks are honestly kind of useless. Um, they really don't do that much damage. Uh, one thing I will say, though, is if you have his signature weapon, Light of Foliar Incision, uh, you will be doing a bit more damage with your normal attacks because there will be uh, a, where is it, uh, Dendro Infusion here. So uh, his signature weapon makes this a little bit different. Most of the time, though, you're going to be doing most of his damage with his skill, with these projection attacks. So leveling up his skill is the most important. Normal attacks are not as important, and his burst is honestly not very important either. In terms of Alhytham's artifacts... There are really two sets that I would recommend you run on him. Uh, one over the other if you have good stats, but honestly, if you have good stats on either one, uh, I would just run that set. Uh, his best set is going to be 4-piece Guild of Dreams. Uh, this increases your elemental mastery by 80 with the 2-piece, and with the 4-piece you will be gaining uh, attack or EM based off uh, dealing elemental reactions, or triggering elemental reactions, excuse me. Um, this really depends on your team comp. For instance, uh, if you have, let's say, three party members that do not have, share an elemental type with him, so Dendro, so you have, uh, let's say you have like Fischl, Yaimiko, and Kazuha, right? You're going to be getting an extra 150 EM from that. However, if you have three Dendro characters in a team and one non-Dendro, you're going to be getting 50 EM and 28% attack. So it really does depend on what you want to do, but overall this is going to be his best set. Uh, I honestly don't have the best substats on this set, so uh, this is my ratio on this set. The important thing here that I'll get into in just a little bit is energy recharge. He does need a solid amount of energy recharge, um, and with this set, I have very low attack because I have a level 60 weapon on, uh, but I do have 379 EM, and I do have uh, 144 recharge and a solid enough crit rate crit damage. Uh, the other good set for him is Deepwood Memories. This is the set that honestly I think is probably just going to be straight up the best form if you have good substats. Um, because this one's kind of conditional. The attack percent isn't going to be as valuable for his projection attacks as the EM buff from having teammates that are different party type or different elemental type from him. Uh, the Deepwood Memories set is just a very standard set. You will always be able to trigger it because you will be doing damage with skills and bursts and you'll be decreasing their Dendro res, and you'll be getting 15% Dendro damage bonus. However, you can run a team that has another Dendro or a Deepwood Memories character on it, and that means that you are free to run uh, Guild of Dreams and not have to worry about the or activating the um, uh, Dendro res decrease on his attacks. So it gives you an option to do more damage, essentially, with him. 
Uh, Deep Wood Memories, very good set. Personally, this is the one I use most of the time. If I don't have another character I want to put it on, or if I'm too lazy. Because uh, Guild of Dreams is just overall his best, but sometimes I get lazy, and he performs well with either set. In terms of weapon options, I'll hype them Signature Weapon, the Light of Fuller Incision, is going to be his best in slot weapon. Uh, I believe it performs about 27% better than a standard baseline weapon. However, he does have other good options. For instance, I don't have it, but the Haranga Pakafutsu is actually pretty good. Um, it does a lot of skill damage, I believe, and normal attack damage bonus. I, I believe that's correct. Like I said, I don't have it. Um, the important thing about Alhaitham is that he scales off crit, he scales off EM, he scales off dendro damage bonus, and attack. So he has a lot of weapon options that are going to be fairly similar in terms of uh, effectiveness or ability. His signature weapon is a great combination of all of those, though, and that's why it's going to be uh, his best in slot weapon. Jade Cutter is also a very good weapon for him. It has a solid enough base attack. You give an attack bonus from uh, HP, just not the passive, and has 44 crit rate. Uh, very significant for him, just a good stat stick overall. Uh, Misplitter Reforge is also a good weapon on him, just giving you Dendro damage bonus, decent enough crit damage, and a high base attack. Another actually significant weapon is going to be Freedom Sworn. Um, it's not going to be one of his better options. It's going to be... I want to say it's like his fifth best weapon. Um, something like that. It's not as good as those other options I mentioned, but for a five-star weapon that has EM, uh, it's going to be pretty good. It buffs the damage dealt by 10% at R1. It gives you 60% uh, normal charge and plunging attack damage, which is it's all right for him. It'd be better if it was skill, but it's still decent enough. It gives you 20% attack once you trigger uh, the Millennium Movement for both of these buffs. And his Elemental Mastery is increased by 198 at level 90, which is actually quite significant. Um, in terms of other weapons, in terms of 4-stars, you can use Black Sword, although this weapon is honestly just power crept now by the weapon I have on him currently, the Wolf Thing. Wolf Thing is going to be, I would assume, one of his best weapons, even at uh, R1, but at R5 this thing is absolutely disgusting. Uh, this is going to be a very good very good weapon for a lot of characters, DPS Nilo, possibly future what characters as well, but I think I'll hide them as well, especially. I haven't seen any math on it, but this is my presumption based off playing it for a long time. This weapon just gives you at R1 16% skill and burst damage bonus, and because his projection attacks are skill damage, uh, this is just way better than his normal and charge attack damage buff. Uh, even if you crowned his normal attacks and you did not crown his skill, just the actual multipliers for his skill are just ridiculously high compared to his uh, normal attacks. Even a charge attack is doing two hits at 94.4% at level 8. Uh, at level 9, this is just 3 hits of 114% plus his EM and other skill damage buffs, like this one right here. Uh, yeah, his skill is the majority of his damage, and this weapon will buff his skill. Uh, once I can 90 this, it'll be a lot better, obviously, and I probably will use this on him, to be honest, most of the time. Uh, unless I'm using it on, say, DPS Nilo, like I said before. But at R5, this weapon is just ridiculous. Uh, it will give you 32%, I believe, elemental skill and elemental burst damage bonus. And you will get 4 crit rate per time your elemental skill hits for a maximum of 4 stacks. So on top of the 27.6 base crit rate, because it's the same as the Black Sword, uh, you will also be getting an extra 16% crit rate uh, from an R5 uh, Wolf Fang, which is just insane. So much crit rate. That is essentially the same as a Jade Cutter, for, for reference. You're basically getting a Jade Cutter's worth of crit rate at R5 Wolf Thing, as well as 32% Elemental Skill and Elemental Burst Damage Bonus. This weapon is nuts. Uh, I, it, it's, it's very strong. Now, if you can't pay for the Battle Pass, you could always use something like a Black Glyph Long Sword. You could always use something uh, like the Xyphos Moonlight, which I will actually talk about when it comes to team comps later, because this weapon is actually quite good on him, and it matches him very well aesthetically. I wish this was his best in slot, because it just looks so good on him. Uh, Black Sword, like I said, is usable, but it's just power crept now. If you're going to buy Battle Pass, just use the Wolf thing. Um, if you really need to, you can also use an ER weapon. Uh, Festering Desire is going to be a good option for him if you have it, although I don't have it because I didn't play back then. Festering Desire is going to be pretty solid on him. It gives you ER, skill damage bonus, I believe. Um, 
just a, it's a usable weapon. Typically, though, you will not need that much ER on him. Uh, you can get it from other you can get it from other places, such as substats, or maybe, although I wouldn't recommend it, even an ER stance. Uh, in terms of substats you should be looking for, I would suggest, just as a baseline, aiming for at least 140 recharge. Uh, it really depends on your teams, but if you're running a character with Favonius, say like a Nahida with Favonius Codex, um, this will be a little bit decreased, but he does need recharge. And the reason for this is that you want to rotate his burst every every single time. He's not like other characters that maybe can rely on not having his burst up time. If you have his burst up, you're going to be doing a lot more damage than having to use a skill and a charge attack combo to generate three mirrors because you're going to be losing out on so much uptime on those mirrors. Uh, overall, though, I would aim for just a standard 1 to 2 crit ratio. <clears throat> now, Hytham is one of those characters... <clears throat> oh, man. Uh, I'll hide them as one of those characters that does not ascend with crit stats, which is kind of unfortunate for his DPS potential. He ascends with dendro damage bonus. However, if you're able to get a solid enough crit ratio, uh, it should not matter, especially because even with not insane crit damage or crit rate stats, uh, his EM scaling is just solid enough to give you a lot, as well as uh, the ways to play him, which I'll get into later, but reactions are broken <laughs> we'll just say that um just looking at my stats here i have pretty good not pretty good sorry this is a pretty insane piece honestly uh this is also very good i do have this piece as well which is insane but i'm just gonna use this one um just because uh i have a more balanced crit stats that way uh this is an okay sans it's good but it's not fantastic the er is very handy though dendro damage goblet i'm running a crit rate Dendro Damage Goblet with an ER, and then I have a very good Surplit as well. Uh, if I look at my stats on Deepwood, I believe, and honestly the main reason I don't run Deepwood as often, I have better pieces on this set, the main reason I don't run it is because um, I simply, that is the wrong piece, <laughs> uh, I simply do not have enough recharge. So I have a better crit ratio on this on this uh, set. It's about a 1 to 2. Uh, it's actually very close to a 1 to 2. However, I lose out on some EM, and I lose out on recharge. And this is where it gets to be really important. You need a lot of recharge on him to make him rotate properly in certain teams. And so if you cannot rotate properly with his burst, it's honestly not worth running better crit stats. Uh, I would always do your own testing if you do have him or plan to get him. You can look up spreadsheets seeing how much recharge he needs in certain teams and speaking of teams let's get into that right now the team that i'm running right now is an aggravate uh two aggravate and spread team i guess because you're running two electro two dendro um this is not my ideal team typically i'll run a different team however this team is a lot more quote unquote free to play friendly because all of my characters well my two forces are c6 but my nahida and my alhytham are both not on their signature weapons and they're both c0 uh, Nahida, if you have her, is good, but if you have another character, uh, it really does not make much of a difference. In fact, I would I almost never use her, and the fact that she's on Fibonius should probably tell you that. Uh, I have her on, I think, 4 Deep Wood. Yes, 4 Deep Wood. Uh, my official is kind of insane, I'm not gonna lie. Um, I wouldn't say this is the most relatable official in the world. I have an R2 first grade magic. I have pretty good soap stats on my golden troop. Uh, however, at this point, most people should probably be farming the Mara Chasse and the golden troop domain anyways, so you, I expect you could probably get some pretty good pieces. Uh, and Kuki Shinobu is on Key of Kazu suit. It's not super important. I'm just She's basically just here to heal, and uh, Key just happens to share more EM as well based off her HP. Um, best teammates. For Alhaitham, before we get into the rest of the team comps potential, uh, Fischl is going to be his best friend. Pretty much any team you want to run Alhaitham in, you want to run Fischl in. Unless you're running a uh, devious team that I will show off later. Uh, Fischl and Alhaitham are best friends. Now the issue is, Fischl's Ascension 4, uh, Spread does not trigger as an Electro-related elemental reaction. Uh, Aggravate is the reaction that does trigger for th her Thundering retri Retribution. Excuse me. Um, even with that, though, she does so much damage, and she applies so much Electro that it is just a perfect teammate. Uh, Kuki, like I said before, is here to heal and apply Electro. 
And Nahida is here to share EM and generate particles as well for my Alhypha. Uh, like I said, she doesn't have good talent levels. I honestly don't care about her that much. She's just a very good unit, but it's not a big deal if you don't have her. Have her on 4 Deep Wood, Favonius Codex, and just, I think, Triple EM. Yeah, Triple EM. She's basically just here to uh, give me EM to my Alhypha. Um, so on that note, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to um, Masunori here. Alright, so here we are. I'm just going to fly over to Masunori here. And uh, if we did have a test dummy, I wouldn't have to test it on this guy. But the reason I am is because uh, you'll just be able to see how quickly it's going to melt uh, an enemy like this. And I don't have my burst set, but we're just going to run with it. And I'll kind of go through some combos here as well. Uh, the main thing is, without your burst, what you want to do is you want to go skill with the charge attack. The reason for this is that you will generate two mirrors and then a third mirror on the charge attack. And now whenever I attack, I will be doing a three mirror projection attack. Here, this is a one mirror projection attack. So, the other side of that is, if you go skill into charge attack, you will generate three mirrors. If you do charge attack into skill, you will generate two mirrors. And you will do the spinning shuriken attack. And this is really not ideal. You want to be having that three mirrors so you can get the three hits on his skill. So here, I'm just going to generate some more particles. I don't want Fischl to kill them though, so that's kind of an issue. As you can see, Fischl is just doing insane damage, even without any buffs. Um, 9,000 without reactions is pretty insane. Fischl is a very strong unit. <laughs> Alright, so here I'm going to have this. Like this. And he's going to die very quickly, unfortunately. I don't even have to do anything. Yeah. Uh, that last hit of my burst there did 34,000 on the spread. And keep in mind, I'm using a level 60 weapon. <laughs> um, yeah, this weapon is... This character is broken. I'm going to do just Fischl and just Alhaith in here. And you will be able to see easier just the kind of damage he's going to do at C0, not Crown Talents, with a level 60 weapon. I'm going to pull out Fischl. I can't dodge. As you can see, he's doing very solid damage, and this is without being able to keep my mirrors up. Because I do not have So this is why having energy recharge is so important on it. So I'm going to wait. Same rotation, skill under charge attack. And he is taking about 16,000 damage on that 3 mirror hit. Um, once again, this is with very minimal buffs or anything like that. Actually, zero buffs, <laughs> besides the fact that he's level 90. The reason he being level 9 is important is because of the elemental damage multiplier, or reaction multiplier. Uh, if he is level 90, he's going to be doing a significant amount more damage uh, per reaction than he would be at level 80. And this is honestly part of the reason why my official is still not at peak potential. Uh, I do have her C6. Her skills are meh. Uh, but if I level 90 her, I will do a lot more damage. Um, but as you can see, a just out hype them, just official team is able to do a lot of damage there. Uh, not even including somebody like Nahida, who does solid off field damage, or Kuki, who's allowing more reactions to occur and generating more particles for the team. Now, what I want to show you is a specific. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in a team 
that is uh, a lot more upper end, I guess you could say, in terms of investment. Uh, however, I will say this team is not high invested <laughs> compared to uh, what it could be. Like I said before, now he does level 80, all items 90, officials 80, gave me good 80. Uh, these are my Yai stats up here. 126 recharge isn't super important. 72 to 188 is mostly because of the Widsit. I'm using four golden troop on her uh, with pretty good artifacts, I will say. Um, if I really want to make it better, I could use relics or artifacts like this, but honestly, it doesn't matter. We'll be doing a lot of damage anyways. Uh, off piece, on set goblet, and a crit rate circlet. Uh, she's at 286 talents, constellation zero, and I never use her, but it's it's gonna be pretty impactful here. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna generate particles, hopefully. I might have to do two rotations here, because we might die too fast. Okay, it should be good, I think, now. Yeah. Just a second. Alright, so it should be good now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wait for him to attack. i pop this. Pop this. And just start going in here. As you can see, I'm doing about 31,000 damage hits, 16,000 on him. Um, he's doing a lot of damage here. And this is honestly just the power of both Alhaitham and the fact that he's a Dendro character, which means he's able to do pretty insane damage with his uh, reactions. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put on Miss Splitter. And with that, I'm going to have a lot worse ratio. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to. Great circlet here. Still not enough. I'm going to switch to this piece here. We keep the crit damage circlet, maybe. Eh, that's good enough. We'll just stick with this. Let's see the abyss splitter here. That's not what I need to do. So, this. I wish my Nahida could crit. Thank you. There we go. Alright. this. There you can see I'm doing about 38,000 damage per hit. 42,000. And just going off this rotation, I have my burst back. Which is perfect. Swap over. And yeah, you should be able to kill him here. Yep. So, as you can see, I had a quite significant damage increase there using Miss Splitter because of the higher base attack and the crit stats. But, it really does not make that much of a difference. I truly believe that if I were using an R5 Wolf Fang, there's a lot more reasonable to get if you do my Battle Pass, I'd be doing about the same damage. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to a weapon, like, um, do I have my Iron Sting leveled? My Iron Sting is level 80. Uh, we will use Iron Sting now. Let me switch back to a crit rate circlet just for better testing. That's not ideal crit stats, obviously, but we can let it happen. Actually, just for this, we're going to keep it here. I'll be using a weapon like the Iron Sting now. Let me... The Iron Sting is a lot more free to play friendly because you can just craft it at the crafting bench. Um, this is going to be pretty important here because you will see that it's not completely necessary to have uh, a really strong weapon. Still doing about 13,000 damage on those projection attacks, and that is plenty of damage because not only is Alhaitham activating his own spreads, he's also enabling Yamiko and Fischl to do more damage as well. Now, Alhaitham also acts as a good character in a Hyper Bloom team. I don't use Hyper Bloom as often now, but if I do want to use it, I could use a team similar to. Well, we'll get to this later. <laughs> Um, we can make a hyper blue team here. 
We will use Raiden. I use Raiden most of the time for Hyper Bloom teams, although it's probably not ideal. We'll use Alhaitem. He will be over here. We will use... Uh, let's go... Yeah, let's go Zingcho and Kokobi. Let's go Zingcho and Kokobi. Zingcho is meh. He's really not built. I don't have artifacts on him. That's fine. It really doesn't matter. Uh, C6. Whatever talents. Kokomi is missing a piece. It will not matter as much. And Raiden, we will switch to full EM. I do have a not good, but a I mean all EM set on Flowers of Paradise Lost. That's what we're gonna be using here. And realistically this is all you need on a Raiden uh, team like this. So 918 EM, not super crazy. And I will switch back to a weapon like I have 143 recharge. I will switch to Cyclos Moonlight. This is a scenario where you want to use this um, because of the extra ER that it's going to give you. As you can see here, I'm out now up to 162 ER, which is a lot better in a team like this that does not generate many Denver particles. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to use standard Team Comp. I believe my Kokomi is on Grilling Tails. That was unfortunate. I tried to switch characters and I could switch. Hey, when that happens, it should be fine. Let's get a normal attack here. Everybody's got their burst, so I will rotate it one more time here. I'm gonna pop this. Pop this. Pop this. Now we do hyper blooms. Now I don't have a uh, what's it called? A deep wood character on this team. But as you can see, even with my very low investment characters, uh, now Hyphen is running an EM weapon. My Kokomi does not have an artifact. She's running Thrilling Tales. My Zincho does not have two artifacts, and he's using Sac, uh, sac Frags, or sorry, Sac Sword. And my Raiden is just on EM. Uh, Hyper Bloom is absolutely broken, and it will easily carry you through anything like this. And finally, the last team comp I do want to cover, outside of a spread or hyper -blue team, because he is a good Dendro driver, uh, is Nilo Blue. He's a team that not many people would ever consider. However, he is very strong from my experience in Nilo Bloom teams, uh, as the sole Dendro. And that's what I'm going to do here. We will bring in Lytham, and this is the team I'm going to use. Now, I do want to kind of preface this again, I say this in almost every video. Uh, Oh wait, I forgot. I have the wrong artifacts. <laughs> um, yeah, this is going to be my Farina build. We're going to switch this to a full Nilo Blue Team build. So I'm going to go, uh, I guess, this piece. Uh, this piece, say yes. We'll go uh, this piece here, HP. This piece, HP. Oh wait. Yeah, that's fine. And then we will go HP here. Let me find a HP goblet. Uh, I guess that works. So I could go higher HP, but I'm going to keep it a little bit more relatable because I do have a key of Kajin suit. We're just going to go below the ultimate threshold. Uh, Kokomi, I will put her on Deep Wood Memories because this is kind of what you want to run when you're on a team like this or in a team like this. Uh, I do have some pretty good deep wood pieces. This one is completely useless for Kokomi, but it is on HP Sands. I do have a healing bonus circlet, and she's on HP Goblet. Perfect. Throwing Tails, fine. Uh, Yelon, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Yelon on. Uh, I'm going to put her on Favonius because this is more relatable. Um, and with this, whoops. With this, I'll have very high crit rate, crit damage, very high ER. I do have C1, and I do have her crown, but. I'm kind of taking away all of the benefits of having her C1 and her signature weapon here by using a level 70 Favonius Morbo. Alhaitham, this is where it gets interesting. Alhaitham, I'm going to put him on the Flowers of Paradise Lost. Seems kind of counterintuitive, but because he's going to be the one triggering most of the Dendro reactions, uh, this is the kind of uh, artifacts you want to put him on. He will have very bad crit stats, a lot of EM. Uh, however, it really doesn't matter in this team comp because... Um, and I'm actually going to put him... Let's see. Let me switch to him real quick. How much... 
Did I mess something up here? Why does he have no DR? Uh, that's not supposed to happen. Am I missing something? Oh no, okay. I was missing something. Uh, put him on this Kazuha Goblin here. 138. And that should be about enough for him to be able to uh, properly uh, rotate his burst with the energy part generation. So, let me just make sure I have everything correct. We have Pavonius, we have Pokemi on Eatwood, I like them on Flowers of Paradise Lost. Cool. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go fight the Seahorse, which is obviously not the ideal. Um, I don't mean to fight with this sort of team, but it will, should, theoretically, still perform quite well. I'll hide them, is not going to be doing as much damage. However, because he has such high EM scaling, even if he's not critting, it's going to be doing decent enough damage. He'll be applying, and I'm also not going to apply any, uh, we'll just go character healing effectiveness, because I really, I don't want to have too much recharge and show off the wrong thing. So let me just start throwing out these balloons. As you can see, I am just shredding through this thing, even with pretty bad overall stats and uh, low-ish investment, all things considered. I'm gonna do this, and as you can see, this rotation is just happening very quickly. It is perfectly rotating here. Now the issue here is I didn't have enough VR, but it should not matter. I am just absolutely shredding this thing with Nilo single target list. Um, yeah. <laughs> this team is so fun to use, man. It is, it is just, it's, it's ridiculous. And once again, I will just point out, this is with not high invested Yelon uh, in terms of weapon, and her C1 is essentially useless because I have way enough energy recharge here. Uh, Kokomi is on Thrilling Tales and Four Deepwood. Uh, Alhaitham is on Flowers of Paradise Lost, and he is running Zypos. You could run Freedom Sworn if you have enough ER, but I do need the ER uh, for this team. And Nilo is just sitting here looking pretty with her Key of Kajma suit, and not even max damage on this. Uh, theoretically, if I wanted to, I could run Elegy for an extra 100 EM on my Alhaitham, but I'm not going to go that overkill. As you can see, this team is already performing very, very well. And the very nice thing about being this flexible in this team is that you are able to um, you're able to switch off and heal with Kokomi whenever you need to. Um, that's one of the better things about this team, in my opinion, is Yelan is going to be doing off-field damage, and if you need to, you can burst with Kokomi. Uh, her team, her uh, artifact set really does not matter because she's not going to be doing as much damage. Um, she's just going to be healing your team if you run all HP and healing bonus on her. I believe I've... yeah, all HP and healing bonus on her. Um, the blooms will not be able to kill you, or your own blooms will not be able to kill you if you use Kokomi, which is why she's extremely solid. Now, I do recognize that this team is full of, uh, uh, four or five stars, you know, uh, and my Nilo does have C1. However, this is not super important because all of the Dendra application is coming from uh, Alhaitham, and because that is the case, uh, you're going to be having enough Hydro application most of the time anyways from your Kokomi and Yelon that that extra six, uh, second duration is not going to matter too much, um, although it is something to consider, I guess. Um, yeah, I mean, in that case, you know, her C2 would obviously buff this team as well, Having Yelan's signature weapon would also buff my te this team in terms of overall DPS. Uh, there's things you could do to make this team stronger, but I simply am trying to use a more relatable team with the Xyphos Moonlight um, with C0, not Crown Talents of him. Uh, so for some closing remarks, Alhaitham is a quite strong character. He's a Dendro carry, and I believe he personally is a lot more fun to play than a lot of other carry characters. Because he doesn't only just do damage, he also enables other characters to do damage as well. Uh, if you use him in a aggravate team or spread team, his other teammates are also doing a lot of damage based off the dendro that he's applying. Uh, he also has a high investment ceiling and also a low investment floor. Uh, a way to, or high, high investment floor. Or, uh, I guess it would be low. 
Uh, he also has high damage potential at a low investment floor. And the reason for that, like I mentioned before, is the fact that you can run a plethora of weapons on him and he will perform well, uh, as well as the fact that you can use him in a team like Nebula Bloom as a single uh, Dendro Driver, and he will perform well. Uh, you can use EM weapons, you can use Iron Sting, you can use a myriad of weapons on him, and as long as you have enough energy to rotate his burst, you will be doing a lot of damage and enabling your team. Uh, the difference between him, and I'm going to mention this, I guess, in this closing, is the difference between him and Nahida. Nahida is a character that buffs your entire team's elemental mastery at C0. Um, and this is honestly pretty incomparable in terms of other characters in the game. Uh, it is such a substantial buff that she allows a lot of other teams to become extremely viable. Um, and one of the reasons I don't like using her is because I think she just... One isn't fun to play, but two uh, does just kind of trivialize things. I like being able to play Al Haytham and not playing Nahida. <laughs> uh, Nahida basically uh, overshadows him a bit because she does give so much EM. However, his ideal team comps will include Nahida. I just don't like using her. I don't like leveling her. That's why I put her on Pavonius. That's why her talents are 266. I just don't care. I don't use her. If I use Al Haytham, I do not use her. Um, but yeah, uh, just kind of recapping everything I said, I guess. Best weapon, uh, signature, is Light of Fuller Incision. Other than that, it's going to be Jake Gutter, Miss Splitter, Hironda Pakafutsu, and potentially, I think Wolf Fang at R5 will be somewhat comparable with these, although I'd have to check damage counts on that. Ideal sets, it's going to be, for most standard play, it's going to be Gilded Dreams or Deepwood. Gilded Dreams almost always, because Deepwood is the set that you can put on your supports. However, Deepwood is also perfectly fine on him, and if you have better substats and better ER thresholds on your Deepwood set, I would use that over your Guild of Dreams, because the increased damage from this is not going to uh, make your ER problems go away. Uh, I do run Flowers of Paradise Lost on him in single driver, single Dendro Bloom teams, but uh, this is for fun. <laughs> if you're going to play him normally, you can play him as a spreader uh, aggravate enabler. Uh, talents. Level his skill first, and you can honestly get away with just leveling his skill. Uh, his other, you know, avenues do do damage, but it's not as significant as leveling his skill because of this insane multiplier. Level 90 or I'll hype them. Uh, your reaction multiplier is going to be a lot higher at level 90, and as such, you'll be doing more damage with his entire kit because his entire kit is based around uh, dealing damage with reactions. Uh, his best teammates are going to be Fischl, uh, Yai Miko, potentially Kuki, and Nahida. Uh, Fischl is going to be his best partner in crime. Uh, I use them on almost every single team together, and Fischl is just such a broken unit that if you use her with your Alhaitham, you'll be doing so much damage just by themselves. Just two characters are going to be doing more damage than an entire Dea team. Sort of, but not really. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, honestly, they might. I'd, I'd have to check, but just her and him could probably do more damage than the Dea team. Um, another teammate that you could use with him is Zhang Li, although I wouldn't really recommend it, because Kuki Shinozu is one of those characters that can heal. She applies Electro to enable spread and aggravate, and she uh, does have pretty solid constellations that will give you extra healing, that will do more Electro damage, and increase the AoE of her skill. Um, other than that, if you do want to use a character like Kazuba, you absolutely can use a character like Kazuha, like Sucrose, if you're going to run two Electro characters with him, or with Al Haytham. Um, his team comps are very flexible. If you want to run a Hyper Bloom team, you can run characters like Raiden, um, Dragon's Bane, and Full EM, or Kuki Shinobu as your uh, Electro Flyer, as your Hyper Bloom Trigger. Uh, you can build him full DPS because he'll be applying Dendro, and you can run maybe two Hydro characters. Uh, so you can generate a lot of blooms, trigger those electro reactions or those hyper blooms, and you will be doing a lot of damage as a team. If you build him DPS, even without reactions, he's going to be given solid enough damage, and then you'll be generating so much damage based off of your full EM character, such as Raiden. I don't have their artifacts on her anymore, but you get the picture. Uh, yeah, I would say that's going to be about it for this uh, hype video. This reporting was a lot longer than I thought it would be, and I'll probably be trimming it down quite a bit, but yeah, thank you everybody for watching, and let me know if there's any other characters you want me to talk about.